Today, we know a lot more about natural selection in the sense that we have actually had quantitative studies of natural selection and their field conditions in a variety of organisms, plants, and animals. Uh, we have large statistical summaries that tell us uh, how the dynamics of natural selection changes in different environments and in different species. We also are beginning to understand how, in fact, organisms react to their environment in ways that are much more uh, rich that one Darwin had, a, had a access to. So we begin to understand the ecology that actually causes natural selection. And we also have an understanding of the genetics and molecular biology that allows living organisms to respond to natural selection. Darwin did not have available a theory of heredity. In terms of discoveries, uh, I think the two fundamental things that have been going on and they're unfolding right now are the genomics and, and sort of post-genomics revolutions, the proteomics and metabolomics and, and, uh, and similar things. Uh, these are providing us with a, a huge wealth of data on how organisms work at the fundamental molecular level. And of course, that interacts with evolutionary theory because it provides the mechanistic basis for evolutionary changes. Uh, the other major area of sort of explosion in studies in, in biology that is directly related to evolution is the field of so-called evo-devo, or the evolution of development. Uh, there we have discovered the fundamental things such as that there is a rather small number of uh, master genes that seem to have the, to play key roles in controlling fundamental aspects of development across a, a wide range of organisms from insects to vertebrates. Well, the current version of evolutionary theory, it's called the modern synthesis, and it came about between the 1920s and the 1940s. The modern synthesis itself was built on the original Darwinism. It brought together uh, new disciplines such as genetics, and in particular population genetics, which were not were unknown at the time of Darwin. But since the modern synthesis of the 1940s, much has happened in biology, uh, including the, the explosion of studies in evo devo and in molecular biology and the, the genomics revolution that I mentioned earlier. And all of this has brought to the surface new phenomena of which we knew uh, nothing about before. It also has brought away, it, it, along new ways of thinking about how uh, organisms uh, evolve. Now, this is not in any contradiction uh, with the modern synthesis, or for that matter, with Darwinism itself. It's, it's just an expansion, uh, I think a dramatic expansion of the way biologists look at, at the complexity of the biological world. Uh, scientific ideas evolve themselves over time, and um, we retain the core uh, that works, and uh, we discard things that don't work. Uh, the people that worked on the modern synthesis of the 1930s and 40s were, would be surprised to, to uh, talk about evolvability. The really big question and the controversial one is not really whether there is evolvability or not. The controversial question at the moment is whether evolvability itself changes as a result of natural selection. That is, whether natural selection can improve the way in which living organisms evolve. Um, the answer to that question is rather technical and will take us much more time that, than we have at, at, the, at the point, but uh, there is no consensus at the moment and I, I expect that the discussion both in terms of theoretical biological work and empirical work um, will settle the matter over the next few years. If we were talking about what would be the major discovery in biology that I would hope uh, would take place over, over the foreseeable future. I would have to say, uh, I'm hoping that we will know quite a bit more than we know now about the origin of life. That really is a um, mystery wrapped in an enigma. Uh, there are several theories, of course, that address uh, that transition from non-living to living. Darwin himself was very puzzled by that question. We know a lot more today than he did, but still we don't have a, uh, anywhere near a clear picture of, of that transition.